Hi, this is Zach with Warner Wound. Today I'll be taking a look at the Sago Superior Field Watch model SSA059. Uh, this is a limited edition watch of 2500 uh, and it's, it's very interesting and uh, kind of an intriguing sport watch from the brand. You know, we've um, taken a look at a handful of Seikos before, usually from the Seiko 5 line. Uh, they're, you know, some of the most uh, affordable, if not the most affordable uh, mechanical watches out there and while also being still very cool and, you know, very well made. And this model, which is part of the Seiko Superior line, you know, is a little bit more money at $250, but it's also extremely feature rich, uh, featuring the uh, kind of a different movement, the Seiko uh, 4R37A, which is automatic with uh, hand winding capabilities as well as hacking, a 24 hour hand and date. Uh, so it's, you know, really nice robust movement. And then the watch itself has an external bezel, an internal bezel, um, a really interesting layered dial. It comes on this cool kind of nylon uh, bun strap here. Um, and then this limited edition is in black with, you know, these acid green highlights. So it's really, it's a very intense watch, a very sporty watch, um, you know, kind of a bit different than anything we've looked at before. So uh, yeah, let's uh, take a closer look now. This watch features a fairly uh, wild case design that is actually a bit tricky to get a, an accurate measurement on because it measures kind of differently in various points. But, you know, it averages about 44 millimeters wide and then with a 48.75 millimeter uh, lug to lug, 22 millimeter lug width, and then about 12 mill millimeters tall, but then, you know, if you're wearing it with the bun strap added here, you know, it's, it's well over, you know, 15 uh, millimeters tall. And then the case design itself is actually just very bizarre and, and, and frankly quite interesting. So, you know, looking at it from above, you have this really interesting sculpted uh, bezel here with obviously very large, bright uh, six, 60, 15, 30, and 45. Uh, it's a 120 click uh, unidirectional bezel with fairly nice action. It's, it's a little easy to turn, but it has, still has a decent snap to it. Um, you know, one thing is, you know, since these markers are so big, it's, you're not really like lining it up precisely anyway. But one thing that does help line it up, which I actually really liked, is that on the case side here, you have these uh, really kind of large grooves, and those large grooves match up with the, uh, you know, the texturing on the bezel itself. So when you turn it, you can kind of feel it line up to those marks, and then you're now exactly, basically on one of the five minute marks, uh, which is really cool. It's a really nice way you can actually feel it in your hand rather than you know having to just do it visually. Um, on the right side here, you have two crowns. So you have uh, the crown here for timing, and then the internal, um, sorry, the internal bezel crown, which has this little green line to distinguish it. They both measure uh, about seven uh, millimeters in diameter by about five millimeters long. So they're, you know, fairly sizable. Uh, the, the time crown here is actually not screwed down, which surprised me. Uh, the watch does have a hundred meter water resistance um, and I just expected it to be screwed down, but it is, uh, you know, free turning. Um, it has this kind of neural texture on it. And like I said, this watch is hand winding, so you can turn it. Though, frankly, with the bun strap, here you kind of you know have a hard time getting to it. Uh, there's various kind of crown guards going around here making for the kind of asymmetrical case design to really kind of stand out and be interesting. Um, now we're looking at the internal bezel so once again it's a little hard to turn here but it uh, if you get your finger under there um, turning it actually has a really nice action. It, it's bi-directional, doesn't click and this clearly has this kind of compass function on it which we'll uh, get into a little bit more later. Um, now I'm just going to try and take the bund part off here so I can show you the case back. Uh, the watch does feature an exhibition case back um, for the in which you can see the uh, automatic 4R37A movement in here. Um, it is not decorated at all you know it's a very kind of utilitarian looking uh, movement but nevertheless it is of course enjoyable to see. Um, and then of course on the glass here you have some writing uh, which is an interesting way of doing it rather than on the metal so it does say limited edition there in big letters and then here actually has the serial number or the edition number rather so this is number 27 of 2500 which is pretty cool. Uh, one other thing that I thought was actually kind of interesting to note was that you know considering the size of it the lugs are actually very short and stubby and in order to make the strap fit in, you can see how the strap is actually almost under it. They had to really kind of cut in and scallop that away. So the geometry of this watch is actually pretty complicated and um, quite interesting. 
Um, and then lastly, you know, this model clearly is PVD coated, um, and it is a mix of uh, brushed PVD and high polished PVD. It's very densely black. It's you know, you know, perfectly applied as you know you'd expect from Seiko. Um, I'm not the biggest fan always of polished. Uh, <laughs> sorry, polished PVD. It picks up fingerprints a lot and has a little bit of a plasticky look, but it also looked deeper black. So, you know, I think in this setting, it just adds to the kind of overall striking appearance of the watch. The dial of the Seiko Superior SSA059 is really intense. There's a, there's a lot going on, uh, both in terms of color and texture. Uh, and it's really, I think, dynamic and really enjoyable uh, to look at. So uh, just getting into it now, you have this large index here, kind of an hour index. It consists of these you know, non-numerical, obviously, large trapezoid shapes. They're all loomed. Um, and then between them are little hash marks for the individual minutes or seconds and then that whole layer is actually cut out and you can see it stands off of this main kind of uh, flatter dial portion beneath it. Um, the color of this, you know, when you're looking at it, it might seem black and I mean I guess it, you know, it is black but there is kind of a sense of a bronzy metallic color to it which kind of picks up the warmth of the acid green details all around um, and just I think also makes it just a little bit more interesting than like a really flat black color. Um, so yeah, so this base then underneath that ring, uh, which features you know, the 24 hour dial there, some various markings, is also uh, textured with a grid. So that's not printed, it is actually kind of an impressed pattern and once again just adds another level of, of texture uh, to the dial, making it more intriguing. Uh, so yeah, here at, 20, at uh, 10 o'clock you have this 24 hour sub dial here. Um, and that is linked directly to the hour hand, so you don't set that independently. So, you know, right now it's showing you that it's what, like 1.21 uh, p.m. Uh, you know, in, in, um, it's, it, it's definitely helpful, you know, I think as a quick uh, glance indicator for a.m. p.m. Also, if you're abroad and, you know, you're looking at 24 hour time, you know, it, it is a nice feature to have. And it also ties to the compass function of the watch, which um, I'll talk about in a minute. Um, here at uh, just past four, let me just actually move the hand here. You have this date window, and that is a white date on a black disc. Um, it doesn't quite sit between four and five, which is a little annoying, just one of those funny little details. I'm not 100% sure why they did that. Um, but nevertheless, you know, I think it integrates into the dial well. Um, you know, I was glad to see that it was white on black rather than the opposite. Um, now looking, you know, the other markings on the dial, you have this, uh, painted triangle here uh, below, below 12. I think that just helps you with kind of, you know, at a glance kind of orienting the watch, uh, you know, <clears throat> as to which way is up. And then right next to three, you have an applied Seiko marker and steel. Um, I think it's, you know, once again, it's, it's nice looking. It's, it's not too big of a logo. And I like actually that it's kind of off center. There's sort of a lack of symmetry in this watch when you have all the bezels moved and everything that you know adds I think to the overall intense look of the watch. Uh, the hands here now you have these two uh, the hour and minute hand are these large Roman sword style hands uh, with acid green uh, edging and then <clears throat> yeah loom filling and then the second hand is this kind of arrow pointer with a thin needle coming off all of it's very legible I mean this watch day or night really you can tell the time at a glance which is great uh, so now, you know, this watch features this compass function, which is, you know, part of what makes it unique. And, you know, you have this internal bezel. And I believe the way this works is you actually, with the correct time set, uh, if you were the northern hemisphere, you would basically point, position yourself so that the uh, hour hand, the 24-hour hand was pointing towards the sun. And then you could position this so that north would be in that same direction. And then you would just have basically um, a reference, rather, you know, as to uh, where the directions are and where you are. Obviously, this is something that they don't tell you to use, you know, if you're lost, you know, I think there's probably better ways now, but it is the basic way that you could use a watch as a compass, which is very cool. On the wrist, this watch uh, has a ton of presence. It's really quite wild and aggressive looking. You know, I think the, this bun strap mixed with, you know, all the different uh, accents and kind of the overly aggressive design really make this look like a piece of equipment more than it is, you know, than just a, uh, you know, than a cool looking watch. Um, I think, you know, this is definitely an aggressive sport watch. You know, it doesn't come off at all as kind of you know, dressy in any way. So this is definitely a rugged watch that you wear, you know, out, uh, you know, 
doing active things, um, and the you know the strap obviously re reinforces that as well. Um, as far as the size of the watch goes, I think um, you know, like I said, it's kind of a 44 millimeters, but uh, you know, the lug to lug isn't too long at 48.75, so I think it sits fairly nicely on the wrist at. Um, my wrist is seven inches, so this, I, you know, I think is a wearable size. Uh, really, the most, you know, kind of overwhelming aspect is the height when you have it on the uh, the bun strap. And this part actually comes off. We can show you what that looks like. But you know, right now, I mean, it's just really quite huge. Um, but like I said, that's part of the look. So if that's what you want, if that's what you're aiming for, is this really kind of over the top. Uh, sport look you know I think this definitely comes through. Uh, the strap itself it's 22 millimeters wide at the lug is actually a very cool strap is a uh, part of actually what drew me to this watch in the first place so it has this kind of a you know heavy weight um, nylon with a accent thread that matches you know the color here uh, it's a nicely made strap though you know I mean the components themselves might not be of the greatest feeling I think the leather on the back of the strap is a little plasticky but it feels like this strap will last a really long time it's very tough um, and like I said you know luckily this is not sewn in so you can take that off and we'll show you what that looks like now without the extra pad clearly the watch is um, you know much more kind of normal looking and sits on the wrist much more uh, kind of in an expected way and I think you know here you can really see what the size of the watch is better frankly um, so yeah I mean it's big but it's not oversized yet it still has a very aggressive look even without that padding um, I really like that you can wear it both ways you know this is, would be my preferred way as it's more comfortable uh, as it's just not as much material against your wrist but if you like that really aggressive style that the boon strap you know uh, adds to it it's it's there for your uh, for you to use So to wrap up, the Seiko Superior SSA059 is a really cool, kind of over-the-top, um, aggressively styled tool watch. Uh, specifically, this one is a limited edition with a kind of black PVD and, and acid green uh, highlights. Uh, it's an edition of 2500, so there's plenty out there, but it's still cool that it is limited. Um, I think, you know, for the price of around $250, this watch has a lot of to offer, uh, as well as great quality. You know, I think the features that stand out to me are the, are the double bezels, uh, the kind of interesting case design, um, and the texturing of the dial. Uh, I think they really, you know, make the watch, uh, speak to a watch that's, you know, kind of of a greater value than 250 And that's also, you know, not to forget the uh, 24 Joule automatic uh, Seiko movement in there that is, you know, of course, of great quality too. Uh, so, you know, if this watch, it's kind of over the top tool watch appeals to you, I think this is a great option. Uh, please read the full review on Worn and Wound. Follow us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr.